Crane Durham's Nothing But Truth. Now we move to the issue of the environment. And, Crane, are you going to give us the story that you like clean water and clean? We get it. We get it. Yeah, but sometimes maybe you think I'm hyping things about the media hype when it comes to global warming. I'm going to shift the clips around because I realize that actually clip one is clip one that I want, and I want to go in order of one, two, 21, then three. That all said, I would like you to know that I don't hype the hype. The hype is a reality by the mainstream media pushing an agenda with little, con little to no context. I've posted a debate Mark Moreno had. Yes, Climate Depot. Yeah, you hear about Mark Moreno because you know who's fair and balanced? The guy who gets the story for you from a Christian worldview? Yeah, Chris Woodward. He, he brings in Mike, Mark Moreno from Climate Depot to have the other side of the story when it comes to the climate hysteria. Those are my words on these stories. American Family News. Chris Woodward, you hear him each week right here. Crane Durham's nothing but truth. You also hear him co-anchoring with the likes of Chad Groening, tag teaming with him and others from American Family News, anchoring top of every hour. Now we go to a story. I believe this is from M NBC, but we may have a montage of networks courtesy of Newsbusters. You tell me if I'm making the hype up about climate change, man-made climate change. Roll it. In another important story today, scientists warn that a large part of Antarctica is melting and cannot be stopped. New evidence from the South Pole implies a big rise in sea level. Elaine Quijano reports. Researchers at NASA and the University of California, Irvine, looked at 40 years of data, including observations made from planes and satellite images of a glacier the size of California and Texas combined. Eric Renault is lead author of the study. And at this point, we'll say it's just a matter of time before these glaciers completely disappear to sea. Sea levels could rise by four feet, but not before 2214. It would open the way for greater losses of South Pole ice, which could raise sea levels by another six feet. A 10-foot rise in sea level would submerge tunnels and subways here in Manhattan and parts of Queens and Brooklyn. But, Scott, it would also put the entire city of Miami Beach and much of South Florida underwater. 2214. <laughs> That's a, that's a pretty big chunk of context in the 100 years. Someone else who pointed that out, you found in the, I believe the New York Times actually covering that, of the context of when this could happen and what is actually causing it. Marco Rubio threw his hat in the ring for a presidential run in 2016 this weekend. In an interview with John Kyle, John Carl, thank you, Jonathan Carl from ABC News. He talked about climate change. He also talked about being ready for the presidency, but this particular one is on climate change. Let's see if he plays a political game or does he answer it directly? And if so, how does the mainstream media cover that direct answer? Roll it. Climate change is already affecting Americans all across the country. Miami, uh, Tampa are two of the cities that are most threatened by climate change. So putting aside your disagreement with what to do about it, do you agree with the science on this? I mean, how well, big a threat is climate change? Yeah, I, th I don't agree with the notion that some are putting out there, including scientists, that somehow there are actions we can take today that would actually have an impact on what's happening in our climate. Our climate is always changing. And what they have chosen to do is take a handful of decades of research and, and say that this is now evidence of a longer-term trend that's directly and almost solely attributable to man-made activity. You don't I do buy, not agree with you that. Don't I don't know of any era in world history where the climate has been stable. Climate is always evolving, and natural disasters have always existed. But let me get this straight. You do not think that human activity, the production of CO2, has caused warming to our planet? I do not believe that human activity is causing these dramatic changes to our climate the way these scientists are portraying it. That's what I do not, and I do not believe that the laws that they propose we pass will do anything about it, except it will destroy our economy. It's talk like that that Rubio hopes will appeal to the conservatives he'd need to win the Republican nomination. 
Now, is that a little tinge of editorializing his comments? Cedar, you heard that, didn't you? It's comments like that. that it, the, he's saying it for the base. He's not saying it because it's true. He's not saying it because you all didn't do your research when it came to the committee that put this thing out, this study out that was so highly politicized. I'll give you the rest of the story on that wonderful work done by the likes of, well, Chris Woodward, among others, but also Mark Morano and Investors Business Daily. So with that in mind, how do you think his comments were received on Morning Joe or what I like to call sometimes one sometimes very conservative or is he conservative? He actually rips talk show hosts and then ends up making the point we do, but he buys into the false narrative. Don't digress, Crane. Stay on point. Joe Scarborough, who did serve in the House and was a, had a very successful career in politics, is a very bright guy. I don't like how he disparages others he disagrees with. That all said, he is going to give you some insight and possibly some hope. Real hope? Yeah, real hope in the sense that you will see that when a conservative actually answers a question from a liberal, even outnumbered or even with the amount of media one way disproportionately to the left favoring, that all you have to do is tell the truth and bring the facts to light. And this is why if things were truly fair and balanced in the world of mainstream media news, we would not have what we have today in reflected in our politics. Here's Mika Brzezinski going after Marco Rubio's response when it came to man-made global warming, climate change. Roll it. And why are we talking about Al Gore? If it was someone more substantial, we should talk more. But it was Marco Rubio playing to the base. <laughs> I suggest we move on. What do you think? Well, I, I disagree. I think okay. Marco Rubio could be very significant in 20. Well, he could be if he would if he would actually answer a question without the fear would, if, of the base. If, what if he would alive. agree with you? <laughs> no, you might I actually mean, believe that. You could just I, think, say, I think if Marco Rubio is saying everything that you impact. agree with, he's not going to make it. Um, he's not going to be a significant candidate in <laughs> the Republican Party. Well, he will be. Order to defend out. him, you However, had to loop all the way around to Al Gore and extremism. It was it was a long road to defend him there. Think about that one. I, I, in the long run, luck. Yeah, just, the, actually, no, I was just trying to explain. It took you five minutes to explain why Marco Rubio was okay, okay in his let, answering, let, let and he wasn't. Let me, it was do, a it bad in, answer. let me do it in five seconds. Totally normal. A question. lot of us believe the left have overreached on this that, issue, this just and not we're not going to throw people out of work because of their ideological rampages. Bam. And that's would yield the question, do you smell la 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 la? I really can't do it with Joe Scarborough. But I did do it with Mark Morano on the Facebook page. You can catch the debate or discussion he had where he just drills the host as the host tries to question his funding and point of view, his expertise. It is brilliant. And I posted that for you pre-show, scheduled the post actually for you on the Facebook page. If you go there, American Family Radio, please like my page. Like my page. You can comment. Just don't curse and be accurate. Don't, well, you know what I mean. Be accurate. Be fair. That said, the climate report <laughs> was heavily politicized. Here are some things that you may want to keep in mind. Here are some just quick facts. What about hurricanes? The century-long trend in hurricanes is slightly down. Not up. According to the National Hurricane Center, in 2013, there were no major hurricanes in North Atlantic Basin for the first time since 1994, and the number of hurricanes this year was the lowest since 1982. Wow. According to Dr. Ryan Mao of the Weather Bell Analytics, quote, we are currently in the longest period since the Civil War era without major hurricane strike in the U.S., i.e., three, category three, four, or five. Tornadoes. National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration says there has been no change in severe tornado activity. Quote, there has been little trend in frequency of stronger tornadoes. There has been a little trend in frequency of stronger tornadoes over the past 50 years, unquote. 
How about cold, extreme cold temperatures they go over? The NOAA's national, uh, excuse me, the NOAA's U.S. Climate Extreme Index of unusually hot and cold temperatures finds that over the last 10 years, five years have been below the historical mean and five above the mean. How about those droughts and moisture? While it's been higher than average, paraphrasing, in portions of the country that were subject to the extreme drought and moisture, the 1930s, 40s, and 50s were more extreme in this regard. In fact, over the past last 10 years, quote, four have been below the average and six above the average. And floods, well, Dr. Roger Pilke, Jr., past chairman of the American Meteor Meteorological Society Committee on Weather Forecasting and Analysis reports, quote, floods have not increased in the U.S., in frequency or intensity since at least 1950. Floods, flood losses as a percentage of the U.S. GDP have dropped about 75% since 1940. Now look, the, er, the temperature has flatlined for the last 17 years. We're talking about hundreds of years in projections. They thought we were going to have an ice age at this time in the 1970s. And there were the same people doing this today. The hockey stick of CO2 and temperature and the increase, I told you, nearly 20 years, 17 years now is flatlined. You have a religion. By the way, you know who the enemy in the global warming climate change religion is? It's man. And there's more on that, as Jerry Boyer has detailed. But it's about population control. Not conspiratorial, just their religion and the tenets of their religion and what you have to believe in light of the evidence. And unfortunately, their evidence is not stacking up, so they have to get more hysterical with their projections or what they have done with the idea of, I'm going to scare you because I really want to take over the means of production of the economy, therefore I can centrally plan it. Means of production of the economy, that sounds like, oh, socialism. Yeah, what is energy? We have energy that works. We need to use it. Let's stop demonizing fossil fuels. Let's start looking at the reality of green energy and how that leads to crony capitalism, exactly what the left ostensibly doesn't like but is embracing and endorsing by taking financial resources from producers and people who want to be producers who want to use their godly gifts to produce something that is great to benefit others and channeling that to government planning the economy of where things go and the success of green energy it's not there even with the costs of solar going down it nonetheless can't survive without government nor can the wind tax credit and this is not about R's or D's, it's about accountability and honesty and the absurdity of an administration and, quite frankly, those who are not having enough fortitude and courage to stand up and tell the truth about what global warming was and climate change is, man-made climate change is. And James Inhofe did that. You know who worked for James Inhofe, actually? Mark Moreno. you got to see this clip. More truth. Hans von Spakovsky on the flip side regarding voting, the Voting Rights Act and Rand Paul's comments. Crane Durham's Nothing But Truth, Voter ID and Rand Paul's comments. Crane Durham's Nothing But Truth, AFR Talk.